First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, which is our foundational passage for the series, which means this is the passage that we Let me see that, make sure. I got to see that. And that we started out, started the series out with. And we read it every time. There hath no temptation to you, but such as is common to man. This includes the temptation to quit on God as well. Because I understand there are some people who are quitting on God. I don't know how you do that, but some people are doing it. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to to bear it. And then I want you to focus your attention on Psalm chapter 10 verses 2 through 6. The wicked in his pride doeth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved. For I shall never be in adversity. Holy Father God, as we oftentimes acknowledge, and uh, you have given us enough humility to help us to acknowledge that we are weak and feeble. And we need your might and your strength to serve you. Holy Father God, we need your might and your strength and your aid to pray. Lord, we need your might and your strength and your help to love and to do your work and to do your will consistently and faithfully. Whether the flesh part of us wants to do it or not, whether family members want us to do it or not, whether the world wants us to do it or not. So, Lord, help us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. And Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for allowing things to be as well as they are. For they could be worse. And Lord God in heaven, I thank you for allowing us to suffer chastisement uh, in this plague so that we can uh, get snapped back into real Christianity and into reality. Uh, for through much tribulation must we enter into the kingdom of God. And help us to grow in it, through it, and by it. And Lord, to get to the point that we are content with it, that uh, it's okay for us to have trouble and tribulations and pain and difficulty. 
and afflictions and distresses. And, Lord, we pray that you would be thorough with us, and we pray that you'll break us and make us and mold us to be what you would have us to be. And Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you will continue to have mercy and grace upon us, and please forgive us of our many sins, crush and crucify our flesh and the old man within us and fill us all with the fullness and the power of the gift of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, give us a mind to pray throughout this day. Help us, Lord, to give ourselves to prayer. Lord, grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to pray always and to pray without ceasing. And Holy Father God, deliver us from all of our temptations, not just the big ones that hopefully we're on God against, not just adultery, temptation with adultery, temptation with lust, temptation, uh, as you know, Lord, I was tempted by a woman who got into my peripheral vision. Uh, earlier today when we were out uh, getting ready to pass out tracks and uh, I was tempted to take a real look but uh, you reminded me that I was getting ready to preach and I didn't do so and I thank you for giving me the grace and your strength and the power of your Holy Spirit uh, not to take that second look and so that's what this uh, series is about. That's what this message is about. Not yielding to temptation. And we sang that song, Lord, every day, every time service, yield not to temptation. What a powerful and majestic song. What a biblical song. What a meaningful song. Yield not to temptation. And the Lord helped me to share that with the people. And so, Holy Father, God bless and anoint the reading of your holy word. Bless and anoint the preaching of your holy word. Grant me fresh unction and anointing and the power of your Holy Spirit to preach and to teach your holy word. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, everyone here and everyone else with the fullness and the power, the unction and the anointing, the fruit and the liberty, Lord, of your Holy Spirit. And we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for you said, Ask and ye shall receive, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be open unto you. Lord, we pray that you cast out the devil and the demons of hell and that the satanic demonic spirit of Jesus Judas, betrayal, and sabotage, and foolishness, and pride. Out here and out there, for Lord, we know that behind it all, all of the attacks, all of the hindrances, all of the sabotages is the devil himself. All of the sadness, the depression, the despondency comes from the devil in people's flesh. It's so, it's so wicked in our human for flesh, that we love darkness and despondency and depression and downness, and we try to drag other people down with it because we like it so much. Misery loves company, and miserable people love misery. It's, it's just in our DNA, unfortunately. But, uh, Lord, for those of us who know you, Lord Jesus, we have the victory over all of that if we want to have it. And I do pray that you'll give people here and out there victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. And rebuke and bind the satanic, demonic spirit of Judas, betrayal, and sabotage, and cast it out, as well as uh, the, hind the hindrance spirit of Sanballat and Tobias. 
these people who look like they want to be helpful, they act like they want to be helpful, they say they want to be helpful, but they're really trying to distract us and hinder us and tear us down and stop us from doing your will. So, Lord, help us uh, and give us the spirit of Nehemiah when he said, I am doing a great work and I can't come down. And so, Lord, we pray for the salvation of the lost under the sound of my voice and otherwise. We pray for the revival of the saved under the sound of my voice and otherwise and help us all who claim to be Christians to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek your faith in our wicked ways and to repent and to get back to you our first love. And then, Lord God in heaven, we pray that you'll heal the sick and, Lord, we pray that people would be wise as serpents and harmless as doves and not uh, put themselves at risk as things are on the increase already because of foolishness and sin. And, Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Lord, that uh, you will comfort those who are hurting at the death of their loved ones. Help us never to forget them. We cast all care upon you. And Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glorify your holy name. Lift up your holy son, Jesus Christ. For we pray in his name. For his sake, amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Zach Ponin said, sin came through the pride of Lucifer, and salvation came through the humility of Jesus Christ. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share what Dr. Worsby said about our foundational verse before I get into the message. And our foundational verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Dr. Warren Worsby said Paul's third warning was that God can enable us to overcome temptation. And I don't care how old you get, you will be tempted. And I thank God that the plague is upon us in the church because we, we even had people over the past 20, 10, 20, 30, 40 years lying and saying they're not even tempted anymore. And then coming around and saying foolishly that we're giving the devil too much credit. Nobody's giving the devil credit. God said there is a devil and he's doing his job. And we have our wicked, evil, and ungodly flesh within us. And we're tempted by the devil and enticed by the devil and the demons of hell and drawn away 
with our own lust. And this has been proven a million times over in the church. It is sad that the two shows on television about the black church are all about corruption, fornication, adultery, lying, stealing the money. I'm talking about Greenleaf and Saints and Sinners, or Sinners and Saints. Two shows based upon the black church and most and, and, and these shows are produced and put on by black people and these people and, and a few white folks, that's how they see the black church. Full of graft and, and, and nowadays the white church too. Corruption, thievery, using money uh, in the wrong way. Uh, uh, corrupt even in account uh, accounting practices, secret money coming into the church, gangster money coming into the church. Stealing in the church, using money for wrong reasons, adultery, fornication with the pastor, the pastor's wife, as a lesbian, the, the pastor, the homosexual, all kinds of mess going on. All kinds of secrets. And that's the big thing with these shows. Secrets. Which is very common, or at least was very common in the black community, I hope, up until 20 years ago. I hope we got away from that, but uh, maybe not. Secrets based upon the past. Secret babies, secret children, uh, children who don't belong to the father, uh, abortions and all kinds of stuff and people, uh, even incest. People have crossed sex to so much and had sex with different people so much that they had sex with people in their own family and nobody told them because it was a secret. All kinds of this. The strange death, deaths of loved ones, children. Both of the popular shows based upon the black church start out with the death of a child. God help us. Murder. Graft. Corruption. Lies. Secrets. Nothing is transparent. And I believe that as Christians, as believers in Christ, your life ought to be an open book. That we all ought to be transparent. No secrets. And if anything is brought up, we admit the truth, we tell the truth. And let the uh, chips fall where they may. Ladies and gentlemen, I do pray and hope that this plague, as you call it, I call it the plague, you call it the pandemic, to help you to understand what I'm talking about, I say plague dash pandemic. I hope that it will drive all of the graft and the corruption and the whoredom and the whoremongering around in the church. The adultery and the fornication and the lies that have been told, secrets that have been held, will be done away with. I told you from the beginning, my prayer is that God will be thorough with us. That God would break us down to dust in humility. And we, and by the grace of God, that we would 
get away from our stinking pride and arrogancy. The Laodicean church, thinking that we're all that in a bag of chips. That's what the church at Laodicea thought about themselves. But Jesus did not think that way. He called them blind. evil and wicked. So, Dr. Warren Worsby said about our foundation of verse, Paul's third warning was that God can enable us to overcome temptation if we take heed to his word. God permits us to be tempted because he knows how much we can take. He allows the temptation, but he knows how much we can take. And not only that, he always provides a way to escape if we will trust him and take advantage of the way of escape. Most of us don't want to take advantage of the way of escape. It's like one man said, Lord, Lead me not into temptation because I know the way. You don't have to lead me. I don't have to pray that prayer. I know the way myself to temptation. And some of us are guilty across the board, men and women and young people. We know we ought not to sin, but we keep sin nearby. We know where it's at. We know how to get a hold of Bo Peep. We know how to get a hold to Sylvia. Ones that uh, we can easily sin with. Those who have no conscience. They're not bothered by sin like we who are born again. <clears throat> Not bothered by the evil. We don't want them to feel be feeling guilty along with us. Uh, So-called Christians. Both people don't care nothing about you. And he's going to give you what you want and be through with it. Uh, Sylvia just wants her money. Or she just wants the thrill of being with the first lady's husband. Seeing how he really acts, we we know where the, we know where our uh, we know where that temptation is. Temptation is we know where that besetting sin is. Don't bow your head yet. It's not time to pray. Bless your heart. Mm -hmm. Just keep looking straight ahead. Don't give yourself away. We know where the besetting sin is. We know where the weights are. They're nearby, and may God help you not to keep your temptations and your besetting sins and your easy sin friends, your sin buddies nearby on speed dial. You need to break away from them. Break it up. The Word of God says, Break up your fallow ground for it's time to seek the Lord. If there ever was a time for you to break up your fallow ground and seek the Lord, that time is now, my beloved. Words be goes on, the believer who thinks he can stand may fall, but the believer who flees will be able to stand. Flee like Joseph. Get your grip, in the words of Bishop Daniel White, Jr. Get your hat, in the words of Bishop Daniel White, Jr. Even if you have to leave your shirt, like Joseph did. And yes, there are some women. Uh, they, 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 they hunger for a good-looking young man. These cougars, married women. Horish women, they they will try to get you 
And if they if they have to tear your shirt off, they'll do it. Wicked as the devil. It's not always the men. It's, it's, you got some whorish women too. You got some whorish, whoremongering men, but you got some whorish women in the church too. They even get together and drink their coffee together or drink their wine together and talk about, hey, anyway, you seen Brother Sono? You see Bishop, that new pastor that came in? Mm-hmm, I wish I could have him. But just one day, you lying devil. See, that's what God is sick of, all that foolishness, all the lust in the church. And so, ladies and gentlemen, about the passage that we read in Psalms. Psalm 1. And for those of you who don't know, our message is titled, very simply, How to Overcome Temptation, Part 147. And we're dealing with the temptation to be proud as the devil. And we read Psalm chapter 10, verses 2 through 6. And the Bible knowledge commentary says about this passage, in these verses, David delineated the character of the proud oppressor. And just because you are not this way, because you're saved, does not mean there are not many people like this in the world. Red, yellow, black, and white, the proud oppressor. In fact, that's what this nation is dealing with right now. Pride on both sides. White pride and black pride. White supremacy, black supremacy. Everybody thinking that they're better than somebody else. But allow me to share with you, as I'm, I'm thinking about it, uh, there was a man before Bubba Watson, a black man. Many of you don't know his name. He lives in Texas now. <clears throat> and I want you to hear what he said. And I understand it. And I, I, I believe many men in his generation, my generation, we understand it. Don't always curse the opposition you get and the oppression you get. Use it as grist to get things done and to succeed in life. Uh, evidently, he's a type A individual. I'm a type A individual. See, when, I, when people oppose me and people don't like me and, and because I'm black and they don't want to give me an opportunity, they don't want to stand with me and support me and help me like they would help the white brothers uh, and so forth and always looking askance at me like I'm always a problem and all of that. You know what I have done? I did the same thing that uh, this former NASCAR driver did. He said it was fun to him. And the reason why he said it was fun because he said I needed that. To, to, To be the only black in NASCAR, I needed that opposition. Uh, that 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 battle, if you will, so that I can, so, so that I could excel in what I was doing. See, some of you don't understand that. You're not wired that way. That's okay. I'm wired that way. I I I, I see it as an opportunity to do great things. And I, I then, then we, as a Christian, you ha- God gives you wisdom to understand a couple of things. One that we're dealing with human sinful nature. Everybody has their pride and their prejudice in looking down their nose at people. It's it's a part of our sinful nature. You can't get that mad at people when you know they're sinners just like you. The other thing that you God gives you wisdom to understand is that Sometimes people are not saved and don't and, and don't have uh, and, and are ignorant, and you don't get mad at them. You feel sorry for them. 
And I've taught my children, and I've done this throughout my life. I take opposition, and I take battle, and I take fight. Some of you think might think that I've been, I, 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 I've been mad at my wife for 33 years because she has opposed me. My greatest enemy has been my own wife, as far as the ministry is concerned. And some of you think I might be mad about that. I'm not mad about that. I needed that. I and she and, and she'll tell you. I've told her this. I've enjoyed it, and I've used that demonic opposition and rebelliousness as grist, as gravel, to get on down the road. And 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 I've told her. I've done more for the Lord because you have opposed me, and fought against me, and did not support me than I would have if you did. And I believe it with all my heart. Because if she had not done that, she supported me 100%, I probably wanted to spend more time with her instead of serving the Lord. I hope not, but probably probably so. Same thing with racism, prejudice, oppress, proud oppressors pressing down on your neck. And I've used that edge, that, that racism, that prejudice to excel and do many things, worked harder, prayed harder. Asked God for more strength to love. That's what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. wrote a book about. Strength to love. That's That's a unique set of words. Strength to love. Then later on, God gave me a few words similar to that. I guess I borrowed from it. I've asked God for strength to pray. Strength to pray, that would seem so easy to do, isn't it? But it's not. Just like strength to love is not easy, man. It's not. I, we got to have God's strength to love and God's strength to pray. So uh, don't don't curse the darkness, man. Light a candle. Cut on a flashlight. Take whatever God allows in your life and climb over it and do something great with your life for the glory of God. Don't hate people because they hate you, because you're black. That makes you stupid. Stop thinking that all white people hate you and want to see you uh, uh, oppressed. That's not the case. It's not the case. And when you get opposition, like Bubba Watson did, you take the lemons and you make lemonade. By the way, I believe one of the most refreshing drinks on earth is lemonade. Better than water. Better than Gatorade. Better than any alcoholic drink for sure. Lemonade. I, I'm talking about real lemonade. Not like like the soul food restaurant makes it with, with a quarter of it at the bottom being sugar. I'm talking about some real lemonade. I'm not talking about no lemonade in a packet. I'm talking about you squeeze a lemon, a half a lemon in a glass with some cold water and put yourself some honey in there or some stevia. You got something that is quite refreshing. I think even better than water. So you take your lemons and make some lemonade with your life. Stop complaining and whining and being mad as the devil at people. You can't. Some people will never make it in this life because they're so mad at other people. You know, you use that for your benefit like the NASCAR driver. He has a unique name. I forget his last name. He lives in Texas. know, one of those rare, tough black men. Uh, and he said he received all kinds of threats. He said he received death threats. He said he didn't receive a news, but he received death threats every time he was racing. But he said, he said, you know what? I needed that. Why did he need it? He needed it because 
He needed something to fight. He needed something to overcome. He needed to, uh, he needed some folk that he had to show. I can show you better than I can tell you when I whip your butt on that track. That's what he said. That's what he's trying to get across. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what he said. And some of us need that. I guess some of you don't. I, I need it. I got to have the. I got to have it, man. I, I like the battle. I like the fight. I like proving people wrong. I I, I enjoy the opposition. It doesn't. Oh man. Oh, I eat it up. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't phase me at all. Does not phase me at all, my dear friend. I love it. I love it when people who don't think you're nothing, and you're not gonna do anything, and you're not gonna. Turn out to be nothing. I know that's bad English. And then you prove them wrong, and you excel them and go past them. How did that Negro? Uh, how did that Negro get that degree? I don't even have a. I barely got out of high school. How did that Negro get five degrees? Because of you opposing me and thinking that I'm nothing but a nigger, a dumb nigger. You 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 push me on. You 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 encourage me. And that's how you ought to look at it. That's how you ought to take all of your opposition in life. Like that, uh, I, I I would imagine he was the first NASCAR driver. Full of pride, the oppressor is. The wicked man afflicts the weak and speaks abusively of the Lord. The wicked person is confident and has no room for God or God's laws. Always remember that now. The proud and evil and wicked man, he does not have time for God. He doesn't want to hear anything about God's laws. And see, God is in this psalm describing to you the lost, prideful, heathen person. And we have them all around us in this country and around the globe. Red, yellow, black, and white. They do not want to keep God in their hearts and minds. They don't want to think about God. <clears throat> One of the reasons why right now I believe President Trump is failing is because he is he's, he's one of those people who does not want to keep God in his heart and in his mind. He's proud and uh, stubborn and uh, arrogant. I, I, unlike many black people, I do not uh, uh, believe that he's trying to be oppressive uh, to black people or to be a racist. I don't believe that. I don't see that. Uh, if you if you do, that's you. But I believe that he is struggling real bad right now when he shouldn't be because of pride. He won't listen to anybody. And he and and, and and this is the most the other night when he got off that helicopter, that's the most dejected I've seen that type A president uh since the presidency, since he won the presidency. I've never seen Trump with a tie hanging off his tie loose and hanging off of him. Never. And he and he got off that plane like he was de- dejected, defeated, disgusted, and mad, and was about to quit. And that's what pride will do for you. It will cause you to become frustrated. And he needs to humble down. We got we have some pastors who need to humble down. Stop being so concerned about your vision and get with God's vision. Stop trying to push stuff. And see, this pride leads you to do stupid things. Having meetings in the midst of a plague like this, 
with people all close up together and your own people, almost 10 of his own staff members got sick. And in two weeks, you're going to hear about the people who were there got sick. This, this plague is not playing. This virus is not playing, and it has not gone anywhere. I believe that the governor and lieutenant governor of Texas, I, 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 I love these guys. Both of them are Christians, and I'm not mad at them. And even some pastors trying to please the president and support the president and open up too early and look at us now. Texas is about to explode with the coronavirus disease. Same thing with Georgia. Same thing with uh, other places, Arizona, where he, the president, president is today. And it's not necessary. It's not wise. And what is driving them forward? Pride. Pride. Such a person is convinced that he cannot be moved from his wicked ways. He thinks that he's a bad somebody, even against God. See, when you're fighting against God, uh, here's what's going to happen. You're going to lose. And we have politicians and we have pastors fighting against God, jeopardizing the lives of people, jeopardizing and, call, and, 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 and inviting lawsuits. And like I told you, you can make people sign anything you want to. They're going to still sue you. And you don't want that. Be wise as a serpent, Jesus said, harmless as a dove. Be wise as a serpent, Jesus said, harmless as a dove. You don't want to hurt people. You don't want to see people get hurt or get sick. What these politicians and happy talk pastors need to do is pray and trust God and uh, leave it in his hand. Sometimes in life, beloved, you just got to say, I'm, I'm just going to give myself to prayer. This is too big for me. I'm going to give myself to prayer, and I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to be wise so that I can be around to see what the end's going to be. The proud person thinks he can continue undisturbed in his prosperity. And false happiness. His words are deceitful and destructive. God is describing the proud, arrogant, oppressive person. And we're surrounded by them, white and black, red and yellow. Even some pastors are this way. Proud and stubborn. Can't bend, can't change course. Because they, they believe that this is what they ought to do. This is their vision. It has nothing to do with God. And you're putting people at risk because this thing is not playing. And you tell me what you're going to say when your faithful uh, old sister, your faithful old brother, your faithful sister, brother in the church, who they, they're there because you're ask, asking them to be there. They respect you. They see you. Whether you are or not the man of God, they see you as the man of God, and they're going to come and help. And as soon as they get there in the church setting, Christians are just not going to sit six feet apart in the church. They, they, that's not how we're wired. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, and it is happening all across this country. I believe my baby son has five more stories he wants me to share with you today. Oh, God bless you. I haven't seen you in such a while. I'm so glad you're doing all right. Give me a hug, honey. Yeah, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. God's got our back. Come on now. You, I know I know that you don't have the coronavirus. You know God is all over you, honey. Yeah, yeah. See, and then they, they hug, and then boom, there you go. And so you tell me, Pastor, what are you going to say? When they call you and say, I was doing fine until I went to the church set, church house. And now I'm sick as a dog. 
And see, this thing will get you real, sick real bad, real quick. When you can't even breathe. You're coughing and gagging and everything else. What are you going to say? You, you're going to feel, if you're a normal Christian person, you're going to feel guilty. Sorry is not enough. I'll pray for you is not enough. You should have never had them there in the first place. That's foolishness. But you're going forward in your little stinking pride when God is telling you to be humble. The claws trouble and evil are under his tongue. Means that the words he speaks will cause calamity. And that's what will happen with you. Calamity. All of this great talk about the great crowd that's going to be out in Oklahoma. I knew it wasn't going to be a great crowd. And I knew people were going to get sick. Before they even got started, because six, six of the people tested positive for the coronavirus. And then after the thing was over, two more. And then I understand that two security, uh, what do you call them, secret service men have tested positive. So almost, well, that's ten people. That's with the president. And you know what they're going to do at the White House? Not mention that. Going to skip right on over that. Not going to respond to that. Not going to say anything about it uh, so as not to alarm you people. And then going to go out here with a bunch of uh, young people in Arizona and do the same thing. That's foolishness. Driven by pride and what you want. Stubbornness. Selfishness. It is not good. When God is calling us all, who name the name of Christ? Particularly to do what? To humble ourselves. To pray. To seek his face. And to turn from our wicked ways. If we spent time doing that, instead of trying to push on with our agenda, and push on with our Vision will be better off and the people would be better off and they will be alive and not sick. See, it's not only about dying. It's about going through the process of dying, getting sick with this bad boy. Because there are many people who have survived, but they, they, they are not what they used to be. Some have come out with one lung. Some have come out with lung transplants. Some have come out for some reason, with amputated legs and amputated arms and brain impacted, all kinds of stuff this thing is causing. So be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, you know I have a whole sermon to preach. But, Lord, you have led me to cut it off right here, for enough has been said. And all of us have gotten the message that you want us to be humble and not prideful and oppressive and arrogant and stubborn and disobedient. Grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to humble ourselves to pray, to seek your face, and to turn from our wicked ways, and to repent, and to get back to you, Lord Jesus, our first love. Break us, make us, and mold us to be what you would have us to be. Be thorough with us. And Lord, we pray that everybody who names the name of Christ would be humble before you and not proud like the devil. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Amen. Now, beloved, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ has a word for you. In other words, if you were to die today, where would you go, heaven or hell? 
if you don't know or if you know that you would go to hell, you need to listen to what Jesus Christ has to say to you. Dr. Curtis Hudson said, this is where Jesus Christ preached the glorious gospel in a nutshell. This is the greatest gospel presentation, the most clearest in the history of the world, preached by none other than Jesus Christ. You want to know how to be saved from hell and saved to heaven and saved from a purposeless life? Listen to the words of Jesus, for these are the words of life. Jesus Christ said with his own mouth, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. That means that God loves you. If you are in this world and you're listening to me right now, God loves you. No matter what you've done, no matter how you look, no matter how much money you owe, no matter who you did it with, God loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ was speaking of none other than himself Jesus Christ, who lived a holy and perfect life, who never sinned, never did anything wrong. He walked on the water. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry like no other. And then he chose, as the sacrificial lamb of God, to take away the sin of the world, to pay for our sin debt by suffering and bleeding and dying on the cross for our sins. He was buried and he rose on the third day by the power of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever, the word whosoever means anybody at any time, so that includes you again, red, yellow, black, or white. We're all precious in God's sight. We might not be precious in one another's sight, but we're all precious in God's sight. For whosoever believeth, believeth means to have faith in, to put trust in, believe in Jesus Christ, trust in Jesus Christ, have faith in Jesus Christ. Should not perish means perish in hell. To burn in hell forever. Jesus Christ said hell, uh, he described hell this way, as a place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And it's forever. Jesus Christ, by the way, preached more on hell than he did about heaven. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than any of the other prophets in the Bible, including John the Baptist, who did preach on hell fire. So hell is a real place, but you don't have to go to hell if you believe in Jesus Christ. But have everlasting life. Instead of going to hell forever, you can go to heaven forever by simply believing in Jesus Christ. The Holy Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth of the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shalt be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell fire. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from eternal hell fire. Saved from a purposeless life. And saved to heaven. This is a good deal, dear friend. You don't have to get baptized to get saved. You don't have to be a member of a church to be saved. You don't have to join the church to get saved. You don't have to be in a church right now to get saved. You could be in your dorm room like I was when I was in the Air Force some 40 years ago. You can be driving down the road right now. Just pull over and pray. Uh, you can be walking your dog. Uh, 
you could uh, be in your bedroom doing some work or in your office doing some work and you're listening. Right now, just pause and believe in your heart in Jesus Christ and express that belief by praying a simple, short prayer commonly called the Lord's Prayer. Just mean it from your heart. Repeat it after me, phrase by phrase. Uh, not the Lord's Prayer, but the sinner's prayer. You can pray the Lord's Prayer after that, but the sinner's prayer. Just repeat it after me, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart, believing in your heart in Jesus Christ, who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins. He paid your sin debt and mine and everybody else's. And uh, he died for our sins, was buried, and rose again. If you're willing to believe in Jesus, pray this prayer with me, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner, and that I have done evil in your sight. I admit that I have broken your Ten Commandments. For I have lied before, I've stolen things before, I have lusted in my heart uh, at people and things, I have dishonored uh, my parents and disobeyed my parents at times, I've dishonored you and disobeyed you by taking your holy name in vain. God in heaven, for Jesus Christ's sake. Please have mercy and grace upon my wretched and hell-deserving soul. And please forgive me of all of my sins. Lord, I don't understand it all, but I thank you for it all. As I now believe with all of my heart in your Holy Son, Jesus Christ who I believe suffered and bled and died on the cross according to your word, was buried and rose on the third day. Lord Jesus, I pray and I invite you into my heart and into my spirit to save my soul as I believe in you. According to your holy word, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord, and help me to be sorry for my sins for real, and help me to repent of my sins past, and help me to turn from my evil and wicked life, and to follow you, Lord, in the new life. Lord Jesus, for it is in your name I do pray, and for his sake, amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you just believed in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you prayed that prayer and meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, the Holy Bible that I have read to you and repeatedly said to you and quoted to you, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Based upon God's Word, based upon the words of Jesus, you are now saved from hell if you did that, if you believed in him and prayed and called on his name, and you're on your way to heaven. So, dear friend, welcome to the family of God. <clears throat> I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet or read better my book. My son set it up for you to download it. 
my baby son, set it up for you to download it free of charge, titled What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. And Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me of any man enter in. He shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Beloved, until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you by the grace of God in about 10 to 15 minutes or thereabouts. I will be back with the how to stay and how to survive the coronavirus plague briefing podcast. The president ended his briefing but we did not end ours because we knew it was going to be like it is. We told you three months ago it's going to get worse. And thousands upon thousands and yea, even millions may die if we don't repent in the church, if we don't humble ourselves as Christians in the church in this country, especially in America and around the globe. If we don't humble ourselves and pray, and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways and repent and get back to Jesus Christ, our first love, with the quickness. Not only will millions die, and this will go on for a long, long time, America faces the abyss especially. Why? Because God has been too good to the American church and we have failed him miserably. We have offended God. We have uh, disrespected God. We have marginalized God. We have pushed God off of the throne of our hearts. And we have pushed him to the periphery. And he.